colleague. I, Sri Raman Sharma, take the immense pleasure in welcoming you all in the sixth webinar in the series of Seven Day Income Tax Partial, organized by Jaipur branch of PIRP of ICI. It's my privilege to congratulate our branch chairman, Sri Anil Kumar Yadav Ji, and secretary, Sri Kuldeep Gupta Ji, and all management committee members also who are the main force behind the webinar for putting their untiring efforts and yes, of course, our participants, without whom we could not achieve the object of organization. Now for the opening remark, I would like to invite C.A. Pawan Parashar sir, who is a practicing C.A. in Jaipur. He is also past chairman of Jaipur branch of C.I.R.C. of ICI. Sir. Good morning, friends. Uh, I am heartily thankful to the Jaipur branch chairman, C.A. Anil Yadav and his entire team for inviting me and presenting before you in this today tax audit webinar. I'm equally grateful to see Sandeep Jawa, he's a very knowledgeable speaker. And uh, I share one thing, whenever, wherever, I need certain things which is complicated and need extra, extra effort. I discuss with them and we sort it out. Thank you Sandeep for all of us for this. Uh, Mr. Raman Sharma, the young energetic today's host, I also thank you for the today's seminar for inviting me here. Friend, firstly, I would wish that all the chartered content members, CA students, their family members, and the staff members, they should remain safe and out of the COVID-19 ambit. I'm sorry for those who have already, we have already lost. I pray a speedy recovery those who are infected and under treatment, but for rest, those are yet not affected and are safe, they please take special care and attention to be away from this COVID-19. Because you don't know when the vaccine will come and when this COVID will go out of our life and we have to keep away from us. So that's a tremendous pressure for us to working under this COVID-19 pressure. Because in my opinion, everybody says life is first, rest is thereafter. So we have to do our profession, but apart from that, we have to keep ourselves, our known dears and dears, uh, happy and away from this problem. It's really challenging work within this limitation and it still perform with the integrity, accuracy and the high level standards set by the ICA. Friends, so the MC has extended the last date for holding annual general meeting to 31st of the December. It means we can finalize the company balance sheets until December end when the AGM has to be taken place. But the last date for the uploading of tax audit reports are still 31st of December. Uh, it needs to be extended and it's my personal belief that very soon we will see that extension which we are all are eagerly waiting and it has been seen in the past also because uh, due to this the changes they have brought on by the circular 82 by public 2020 relating to section 115 b and bba they have not even uh, given the schema and after the government will release the schema that the software companies will take certain time so i don't think so in the next 10 15 days we will get the new uh, updated tax audit regime. So it will be definitely extended, but we cannot wait it for and cannot stop our hands. We have to equally work at the same time because whatever we can do, we can finish it up because it will, it will uh, relieve us from our future pressure. I think you all are aware. Uh, I've been qualified in the year 1985 and 1985 is known for the introduction of the tax audit. Section 44AB, when the government has placed so much trust, confidence, and dependency upon the chartered accountants, who certified that the audit is following the provisions of Income Tax Act. This is one kind of pre-scrutiny we did at our end, and the government placed reliance upon that and making the assessment and the subsequent working over that. And uh, I've, I've read somewhere else, I'm not thousand percent sure, but somebody has told me that tax audit is a uh, Indian phenomena only. None of the other country is having such kind of audit system. They have a straight away, uh, a statutory audit system, 
but the audit under the taxation provision only it is a indian phenomena only it started in the 1985 and uh, that's why we people in this month of august september october was not even available to our families and all this thing if a friend of mine told me uh, are you are you a chartered accountant okay yes oh it means you are not available in the september they can no sir now the dates has been approved over the time the shapes and the challenges had been increases so so alarmingly and the responsibility we bear while signing a tax audit report even we don't know what are exactly responsibility we are bearing because time has changed when we are doing the physical audit and making the audit reports earlier by the typing thereafter by the computer now the we are making the reports with the help of software and in one kind we are software dependent we are sometimes not giving much skills much knowledge behind making a report because aap software se taiyar karenge to sometimes you make a report in a half an hour one and a half it's ready available but we have to take take a print of it in any manner and give a thrust over it ki what we are certifying because every year every year they are making so many changes so many liability and responsibility upon us that we have to certify it and on that basis on that basis itself the returns have been uh postponed in the system friends time is very challenging to us due to the covid 19 and at the same time the central government has chosen this time for the implementation of their all this faceless system the faceless assessment faceless uh, is uh, appeals and vivas se vishwas scheme is still pending a lot of other things we are still seeing that uh, uh, this year assessment proceeding has not been even started for the SMT 1819 faceless assessment proceeding is still not started whatever the notices are there they are in the system only and government is in a very huge changing procedure making the transfer making the new teams and all this thing so apart from the covid it is a none none less than a covid for us so we have to be get ready with the with the equipment with the facility with the knowledge with the wisdom with the ICA alternative available to us and i think we will come over it as ever forever thank you friends have a profession thank you sir for your kind words dear all after four enriching sessions in the seventh day of income tax parthala today is our sixth webinar by eminent speaker ca sandeep jawar sir on the aspects of tax audit ca sandeep jawar sir qualified as a chartered accountant in the year of 1998 he got a rank in air in intermediate exam held by iti he served as a trainee for 3 years in the most reputed firm of jaipur currently he is practicing with the firm which which has a head office in mumbai and he holds the managing partner for jaipur office he has a 20 plus years of experience in the field of taxation and auditing he has also done some internal audit projects also i would now like to invite our speaker sir can you yes sir yes sir uh, my screen uh, hope uh, you can see my screen yes sir so friends uh, good morning to uh, all of you and uh, uh, this is the time uh, of tax audit you can uh, see on the screen that uh, 31st october uh 30th september of course it has been extended to 31st october and 31st october is coming so it's a uh, tax audit season for us and uh, uh as uh, pavan ji uh, rightly said it was uh, the entire concept of tax audit was introduced in 1984 and uh, uh, i think uh, uh, pavan ji uh, was in the generation when uh, this tax audit started and he qualified so uh, it was uh, his time uh, the generation his generation who uh, might have taken the full benefit of uh, uh, this tax audit so uh, uh, a very good morning to pavan ji 
and uh, i am thankful to the entire uh, branch uh, uh, managing committee chairman anil ji and uh, raman ji who gave me this opportunity to share my thought uh, on this subject so with this uh, friends uh, i'll start with the topic uh, uh the history of tax audit uh, as we have seen it is started in 1984 and uh, day by day we have all seen uh, many developments in the tax audit maybe the developments were very slow in the initial uh, phase uh, from 84 to 90 and then as provisions changed uh, there were amendments in the form uh, tax audit form 3cd form and thereafter a major amendment was there in 2013 uh, wherein the process of filing tax audit report was changed so uh, the new members who have uh, qualified uh, maybe who entered into the training uh, in 2013 they might not be knowing the earlier process of manual uh, filing the tax audit see my first tax audit was there in uh, 1995 when i joined uh, article ship so at that time we used to fill tax audit form 3c d form maybe 3c b was being written by us uh, on rule sheets and then uh, we were getting it typed from the typist and then form 3c d also Uh, we were writing uh, uh, the we, we we used to fill it by pen or pencil and then uh, the typist used to type it and then uh, what uh, was the practice was on 31st of september or october whatever was the date at that time uh, there used to be uh, additional counters in the income tax department and uh, uh, all tents and all uh, would be there and uh, uh, from all offices of charter accountants uh, the clerks peons are going there and then getting the receipt manual thappa on the tax audit report on 31st of october or 30th of september so that was the time we uh, the all seniors have seen i have been doing the tax audit for last 25 years now so till 13 2013 we used to do the tax audit in that manner and uh, uh, there used to be some practices of keeping some uh, some uh, uh, receipt uh, blank some some registers blank and on maybe on first somebody is filing in back date so all those practices have gone now because electronically now uh, the tax audits are being filed electronically so uh, everything is transparent now nothing can be changed no there is no scope of getting anything changed now so we have come from manual system to electronic system uh, though the time is uh, uh, the, the time uh, taken is very long but now uh, we are seeing very fast changes in everything uh, earlier we uh, looked at this tax audit filing written filing and then now we are facing as pavan ji also pointed out uh, that uh, 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 faceless assessment is there in its way now uh, we have to make all Uh, we we have to prepare ourselves for this faceless assessment as after 13th of august no assessment no manual assessment would be there apart from this uh, uh, yeah, assessment in search cases central circle cases so uh, now we 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 have to be uh, uh, ready for uh, this uh, e environment and uh, uh, even if we look at tax audit when we are working in e assessment environment where uh, the assessment is getting done through uh, getting done electronically and in faceless manner and a team of uh, officers is processing everything there would not be any personal biasness anywhere so if they point out any mistake in the tax audit report what would happen we should bear in mind if any mistake is there they would not be considering that which firm or which charter accountant 
has done this tax audit how famous the firm is how famous its chartered accountant is this uh, subjective uh, biasness would not be there now and if the mistake is such that action is to be taken there would be a automatic process there would be a well defined process which would uh, take uh, the complaint or maybe uh, any 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 action at appropriate level so uh, uh, this has to be taken very seriously now and uh, uh, with this faceless assessment and faceless appeal everything getting automized so uh, uh, they they will be more relying on our reports and then if there is any loss of revenue because of our report there will be severe com- uh, severe consequences this i believe and uh, we have to be more responsible towards uh, the income tax department towards even uh, i should i should say towards our country because we should be definitely thankful to the parliament Uh, which has given us uh, this pious function so otherwise uh, uh, i think uh, maybe 50 60% of the cas must be knowing income tax very well because of this tax audit so had it had it uh, uh, this tax audit provision uh, not in the statute book and uh, had this given uh, had this function of tax audit been not given to us it would have been very difficult to us uh, uh, difficult for us to be expert in the income tax provisions because we we have to certify the accounts we have to certify all details so we have to be conversant with all the provisions and because of that this expertise has developed uh, even after post qualification uh we we are in touch with all income tax provisions and uh, uh, this uh, income tax this uh, 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 provisions of tax audit has uh, played a great role uh, in that so i believe uh, since government has relied on us since parliament has relied on us since uh, the entire country has relied on us we have to be very careful in uh, discharging our duty as the tax auditor and uh, this is our responsibility towards the country itself so uh, with this background friends uh, uh, i'll uh, take uh, the issues on tax audit uh, uh, one by one whatever i consider uh, 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 important for discussion on this forum i'll be taking it one by one uh if uh, any query is there uh, i think it can be taken up uh, in the last 15 minutes i will be closing this session at uh, maybe 12:45 and thereafter queries can be taken so friends uh, we all know uh, due date uh, uh, for tax audit for uh, this year there was an amendment in the act uh, uh, for the first time it happened that the tax audit due date has been prescribed as one month prior to the date of filing the return of income so date of filing the return of income for the persons who has to get uh, their accounts audited is 31st october as per the statute book and then uh, therefore uh, as per the income tax act uh, as amended uh, by finance act 1920 the due date for tax audit was 30th september one month prior to the uh, due date of filing the return of income so uh, the provisions uh, of section 44 ab were amended and the specified date uh, was instead of uh, due date of filing return of income under section 139 one it was mentioned it has been mentioned that it will be uh, one month prior to the due date of filing the return of income under section 139 so accordingly 30th september would have been the date but now due to covid uh, uh, the date has been extended to 31st october by notification uh, number 35 oblique 2020 pavan ji has pointed out something uh, we don't know but uh, there are all expectations uh, that uh, this date uh, is further uh, expected to be um, uh, extended uh, 
expectations are there and uh, uh, there are uh, representations at appropriate level but uh, till the time it is not extended we have to we have to try to complete our audits uh, within time and uh, the scheme uh, this is scheme of uh, uh, filing the tax audit report uh, prior to one month of date of uh, filing of uh, return i think uh, the purchase, uh, the purpose of uh, uh, giving pur purpose for uh, giving uh, this uh, date one month prior date in the legislation is to uh, is is uh, uh, they they uh, they will plan to give some auto populated detail in the return of income so from our tax audit report uh, there will be uh, figures will be taken in the return of income so like that they are planning and uh, in uh, uh, in the process of uh, 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 bringing most of the things electronically on the uh, system they the government uh, has done this and this is a welcome step so uh, now uh, Uh, the conclusion of this slide is now we have to complete our uh, tax audit by 31st of October till the time uh, further notification comes for extension of the date. So tax audit, uh, uh, the one which we will largely see. uh in today's uh, presentation is 44 ab tax audit but in many other sections there are uh, certificate is required from uh, an accountant means a charter accountant uh, so uh, for example 10a 1023c 12a 80ia 80ib 80ie 80ic 92e so all those are kind of audits uh, under the provisions of income tax act so uh, not only 44 ab but many other statements and uh, 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 certificates are required um, along with the return of income so all of them will be will now be filed uh, by 31st uh, of october Uh, as per the act it is 30th september one month prior to the date of return of income now the return of income is 30th november so it all of them would be filed uh, by 31st of october so all the work which we do under uh, the uh, income tax act uh, all tax audit provisions they are subject to now uh, taxation audit quality review board of icai institute uh, would be Uh, taking care of of the quality they will be reviewing our reports and uh, uh, they would be giving appropriate instructions uh, for improving the quality of the reports by the members so what are the provisions uh, of the income tax act uh, the major provisions under which uh, we carry on the audit uh, the first one is uh, 44 ab under which uh, this uh, annual tax audit is uh, done it is uh, uh, there is a threshold limit of uh, turnover for all the businesses so uh, business uh, and profession are uh, uh, there is a different limit in business there is a different limit for profession we all know this and uh, there is a new provision this year uh, uh, like uh, 1 crore is the normal limit One crore turnover is the normal limit, and this year uh, provision has come that where ninety-five uh, percent of the transactions of receipts and payment are in uh, through banking channel, then the limit uh, of uh, the uh, limit till which uh, the assessee would be exempted from tax audit would be. 5 crores of turnover so uh, uh, in calculating this 5 crore what is to be included what is to be excluded uh, that is uh, important and uh, a return the form of return of income gives a clue for that it says that uh, for calculating the total receipts 
means 5 percent we have to see we have to calculate a, uh, we have to arrive at a numerator we have to arrive at a, uh, a denominator also so to total receipts of 5 crore we have to calculate uh, this is not turnover uh, this is a, a receipt so if total receipt is uh, total uh, 95 percent of the total receipts are through banking channel and total receipts would include uh, all the loans received all the capital contribution received and all the payments received from our debtors not the uh, sales but payments received from the debtors it, it speaks about receipt and not the uh, uh, sales amount so we have to calculate entire receipts we have to calculate uh, 5%. So 5% uh, margin has been given for cash receipts. So if it is exceeding 5%, then uh, we have to come for in the limit of 1 crore turnover. And if it is not exceeding 5 crore, cash transactions is not uh, exceeding 5 crores, we can go for 5 crore limit. So enhanced limit is there for an SSE who transact through banking channel. So, uh, as like receipts, there is a provision for payments also. So, we have to maintain both these sides. Even in receipts, we have to maintain 95% of banking transactions. Likewise, in case of payments also, we have to maintain 95% uh, of the banking transactions. So, if we comply with this, we are into banking transactions. 95% of our transactions of receipts as well as payment are through banking channels. Then 5 crore till 5 crore, um, uh, we are uh, the SNC will not be required to get its accounts audited under section 44 AB. So it's a relaxation for the persons who are uh, operating under banking channels. Um, so in case of uh, business uh, uh, profession uh, the limit uh, turnover limit, limit is 50 lakhs uh, uh, when the receipts or the turnover exceeds 50 lakhs then only uh, the SSE is required to get uh, get its accounts audited so uh, there are uh, four five clauses a b c d and e and in, uh, in section 44 a b so in clause a uh, this one crore and five crore limit for business is covered and then in B, uh, profession is covered and 50 lakhs limit is given. And in C, um, uh, the sections uh, of presumptive taxation, three sections of presumptive taxations, uh, taxation are min, uh, mentioned, 44 AE, 44 BB, 44 BBB. If the SSC desires to show an income which is lower than uh, prescribed by these sections, uh, then only uh, uh, he has to get uh, his accounts audited. Means if he is entitled to get benefit under Section 44 AE, 44 BB, 44 BBB, but he is showing his return of income which is lower to the income which has been prescribed as per those provisions of those sections. Then only he has to get it, uh, his accounts audited and 44 AB Clause C. Uh, uh, would apply in that case and uh, in case of profession uh, there is a presumptive taxation uh, provision 44 ADA so uh, it gi gives uh, a presumption uh, a deemed profit of 50% uh, of the total receipts if the SSE wants to show profit lower than 50% then uh, he has to get accounts audited under section 44 AB um, in under the provisions of uh, uh, 44 AB clause D. Then clause E would apply to another presumptive uh, taxation uh, provision 44 AD and uh, it specifically refers 44 AD subsection 4. If we uh, uh, will see in detail this particular provision that if uh, is uh, complying with certain uh, 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 certain conditions and he wants to opt out of 44 AD then he has to get its accounts audited uh, his accounts audited under section 44 AB so clause E uh, 
uh, refers to 44 AD subsection 4. If SSC is falling under subsection 4 of section 44 AD, he has to get his accounts audited under clause E of section 44 AB. So these five clauses are there and the all these five clauses are important because uh, in the tax audit form itself, form 3CD, in clause 8, we have to specifically mention that under which clause of section 44 AB we are auditing the, uh, this particular assessee. So uh, the clause has to be mentioned correctly and we have to understand we'll, uh, uh, 44 AD provisions, so we'll see in detail how uh, it would work. So then uh, rule uh, 6G uh, is there, which uh, 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 provides the forms uh, uh, of report under section 44AB. Then form 3CA has been prescribed by rule uh, 6G. So form 3CA, 3CB and 3CD. These three forms have been prescribed for uh, the reports of uh, uh, tax audit. So, form 3CA and 3CB um, uh, are two different forms of uh, uh, audit report and 3CD is enclosed as an excerpt to form 3CA and 3CB. So, this 3CA we all know applies where, where uh, the SSC is required to get its accounts auditor under any other law. And then uh, the general purpose audit report is not required in that case under the provisions of Income Tax Act. And a report has to be given under 3CA. This uh, 3CA may be signed by a different person who is who has not signed the audited accounts. Auditor accounts may be signed by some other charter accountant. And uh, form 3CA means tax audit can be done by some other charter accountant. So he has to rely on that balance sheet and thereafter give his report uh, 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 under, uh, in form 3CD and enclose it. So he, he has to refer the uh, report and the balance sheet, audited balance sheet, which has been done by some other charter accountant and then fill the particulars in form 3CD and uh, has to enclose form 3CD to 3CA. Then 3CB is a kind of general purpose audit report which also gives a report of true and fair statement of the financial statements. Uh, profit and loss account and balance sheet gives uh, balance sheet, in case of balance sheet it gives true and fair picture of state of affairs and p and l account gives true and fair picture of the profitability of the SSC. This particular statement he has to give like in general purpose audit report. So 3CB in initial uh, initially um, means uh, in the uh, first uh, four paragraph, first three paragraph is the general purpose audit report. And thereafter four, four and five para are in respect of enclosure of 3CD for particular statements uh, for particular details which are required to be filled in in form 3CB. So 3CB as it is general purpose audit report, it gives uh, true and fair, uh, uh, it, it, it insists on uh, giving true and fair picture of the financial statements of the SSE. So uh, true and fair, we all know what is true and fair. Uh, uh, we are not expected to see each and every entry in the books of accounts, all sampling and everything is possible and we have to take a view of true and fair picture. And there is a uh, space uh, in 3CB for giving our observation if uh, the uh, there are some observations because of which we, uh, we are of the opinion that uh, a particular item of income or expenditure or asset or liability is not uh, correctly stated. We can give our uh, 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 our observation. We can give our comment on that uh, in para three. So after para three, uh, after para three a three has uh, 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 three has got two clauses. A and B. So after clause A in para 3, there is a space in form 3CD, 3CB. So if there is any observation regarding the uh, uh, 
regarding any of the accounting made by the SSC, then we can give our observation provisions are short or uh, the assets are stated at a higher figure. Maybe any kind of observation that can be given because uh, once it is signed, it is a general purpose audit report. And for bank purposes also, they, they call uh, form 3CB uh, and they, they consider it as a general purpose audit report. So, uh, and we are stating in this general purpose audit report that uh, the PNL and the balance sheet are giving true and fair picture of the financial statements. So, if there are any observations that those have to be mentioned uh, in the space which is given after clause A of uh, the after sub clause A of clause three of form three CB. So, this is very important. Uh, true and fair picture if there is any qualification if there is any disclaimer that has to be given here and form 3cd uh, see uh, in in this form itself form 3cb where in clauses 1 2 and 3 it is clause 1 is general uh, about the SSC infor uh, giving information about the SSC clause 2 is about the uh, profit and loss and uh, it is also about the head office and branches detail and then clause 3 gives the statement of true and fair it is clearly mentioned there that uh, balance sheet and p and l gives true and fair picture while uh, when it refers to form 3c d uh, in clauses 4 and 5 in clause 5 it gives uh, that uh, the set form 3cd uh, the particulars given in the set form 3cd are true and correct subject to the following observation and qualification so two types of a statement are given in this form uh, clause 3 refers to true and fair and clause 5 refers to true and correct. So we can very well understand the difference which is wanted from us. True and fair means uh, we have generally checked everything. There is no material misstatement. We can certify that. We can, we can say that. But when it says true and correct, so whatever particulars are required to be filled in Form 3 CD have to be true and correct means everything has to be correct only if they are saying that what is the amount which is to be disallowed under section 40a ia 43b we have to correctly mention it we we uh, should have laid our hands on the entire payments entire expenditure then only we can say that the particulars which are given in that form in uh, uh, in in uh, that particular column is true and correct if there is any subjectivity in that, we cannot, we, we could not check anything there because of uh, um, not providing, uh, not, not getting some particular information. But we can take a fair opinion about true and fair picture of the uh, profit and loss, true and fair picture of the balance sheet up till clause 3, 1, 2, 3, we, we don't have to give any observation comment or qualification in that but if we are not getting any information uh, of any particular expenditure and uh, we could not lay our hand that whether it is incurred in cash or it is incurred through account pay check or whether the uh, um, whether the payments were when the payments were made through check the checks were crossed before handing over to the party like that, if we could not give any, uh, we could not lay hand on any such information, we have to make our uh, observation clear um, in the space given below 5. If we have made any sampling because of any reason, then also we should give a statement there because true and correct means true and correct. There is a very big difference in true and fair and true and correct. So, I have given an example that uh, uh, a statement can be given that true and fair position is there. But for arriving at true and correct conclusion, 
we have to uh, lay hand on each and every uh, transaction of that nature if we if there is any uh, if any deviation is there we have to make the observation that uh, uh, this particular item we have seen in this manner so all those observation have to be given because now in electronic form uh, we don't have much spaces or much uh, provision and in some of the columns of of form, form 3cd only amount can be filled so all these observations uh, like personal expenditure we could not have seen we could not have uh, observed uh, 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 certain uh, uh, that car is being used for personal purpose or for official purpose this we could not see or like 43b whether the checks were uh, crossed before they were handed over to the payee so all these kind of observations if uh, these are required to be made for in the case of that particular client they have to be made here um, under clause 5 so true and correct uh, i think uh, i have made it very clear true and correct means true and correct if we have made any sampling also then we have to give our observation that uh, we have not seen it 100% and uh, ideally what you have seen 100% on from which date to which date you could not see the vouchers it has to be clearly mentioned there it is expected out of uh, the charter accountant to mention it clearly there so true and correct and true and fair both the statements both the words are used in this particular form and a distinction has to be made while discharging our uh, 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 responsibility under the provisions of this act so uh, this uh, next provision is 271b uh, we all know if uh, the accounts uh, are not uh, audited uh, within the particular date within the specified date then a penalty is levable which may uh, extend to uh, 0.5% or uh, 1.5 lakhs whichever is lower so uh, uh, lower of both the amounts can be penalty can be levied if there is some sufficient reason then uh, we can quote that reason while while there is a levy of penalty because now uh, uh, everything is uh, on system uh, by click of button they can uh, know that uh, in this particular case uh, the provisions of section 44 ab are applicable but the accounts are not audited by click of button they would be knowing that who has not filed the tax audit report so Uh, levy of penalty uh, would be there in all such cases um, uh, might be the uh, not the levy but initiation of penalty proceedings would be there then we have to give um, uh, all reasons uh, which uh, uh, are there for not getting the accounts audited and if they found them reasonable they might drop the penalty proceedings or maybe dot uh, those reasonable uh, uh, reasonable cause can help us in appeal uh, during the appellate proceedings to uh, uh, get the penalty levy deleted so uh, these are all the provisions of section 44 ab so there are some issues uh, like uh, if company is incorporated on or after 11 2020 so uh, there is a relaxation under the provisions of companies act that they may not get uh, their accounts audited uh, accounts for 31st march 2020 audit so uh, there would be a consolidated audit uh, including two uh, two financial years in 30 uh, uh, on 30th 31st of march 2021 so in those cases what would happen so in that case if there is no audit under the provisions of companies act and uh, the uh, uh, the ssc was not required to get uh, their accounts audited the company was not required to get their accounts audited so in that case form 3c b along with form 3c d has to be uh, filed 
So in case of LLP, turnover exceeds 40 lakhs. It has to get its accounts audited. So in that case, if uh, the accounts are audited, Form 3C A along with Form 3C D has to be filed. If company is converted into LLP and then uh, uh, the accounts are not required to be audited because the turnover is less than 40 lakhs, then 3C B and 3C D are to be filed, and then uh, LLP. Uh, there is no audit report, a specific audit report format. But uh, since audit is required and uh, general purpose audit report is there, so 3C D, uh, 3C A along with 3C D is required to be filed. And uh, if no statutory auditor is appointed, then also uh, uh, form uh, you know, because of any reason. But tax compliance, uh, there are separate provisions of tax compliance. There are separate provisions for uh, the Companies Act. So for tax compliance, uh, uh, 3C B form can be filed along with the balance sheet. Uh, balance sheet audit can be done under 3C B and uh, form 3 C D has to be filed along with form 3 C B. So as I uh, pointed out, uh, this clause uh, number 8 in Form 3C requires to give the clause of Section 44AB under which audit has been done. So confusion comes uh, in, uh, in respect of Clause E, where 44AD is applicable or not applicable, um, how, how the provisions of 44AD would uh, come into force when uh, whether uh, these are uh, mandatory provisions or uh, as I see who has turnover up to 2 crores, whether he is liable to get his accounts audited compulsorily, if he is showing eight, uh, less than 8%, uh, what are the provisions? We, we uh, should understand this. Um, there are different views. There are some confusions in the uh, uh, language of this particular section also, like section subsection 1. If we read 44 AD subsection 1, then it, it uh, imposes, it, it uh, gives a mandatory provision of considering the income of a person whose turnover is less than 2 crores to be taken at a uh, presentative basis at uh, 8%. It uh, reads like so. But when we uh, come to subsection 4, so it gives an indication that uh, uh, like uh, subsection 4 is there on this phase that uh, where an eligible assessee declares profit for any previous year in accordance with the provisions of this section. This gives uh, an indication, an idea that this uh, uh, particular provision is not mandatory. See, up to 2 crores, if some assessee has turnover up to 2 crores, whether it is compulsory, subsection 1 reads out as if it is compulsory to show the uh, profit under subsection, uh, under as per the provisions of this particular section, 8%. Or if uh, we opt out of the of, opt out uh, of this provision, then the consequences uh, would arise. We have to keep our books of accounts. We have to audit. Uh, we have to get them audited. This is the general perception which comes from reading of subsection 1. But subsection 4 uh, uh, has been uh, worded in the manner which clearly and, uh, indicates that this is an optional provision. Uh, 44 AD, uh, there may be two circumstances. Uh, First of all, we'll read uh, these two provisions, subsection 4 and subsection 5, uh, which will uh, uh, make this uh, more clear. Uh, this subsection 4 says, where an eligible assessee declares profit for any previous year in accordance with the provisions of this section, and he declares profit for any of the five assessment years relevant to the previous year, succeeding such previous year, not in accordance with provisions of subsection 1. Means this subsection 4 is dealing with a situation 
uh, where the assessee has once opted for 44 ad and then subsequently in five subsequent assessment year five succeeding assessment years he has not opted he has he has uh, come out of 44 ad he want to show a lower profit then there would be an applicability of subsection 4 and what is says that he shall not be eligible to claim the benefit of the provision of this section for five assessment year subsequent to the assessment year relevant to the previous year in which the profit has not been declared in accordance with the provisions of sub, uh, of uh, provisions of subsection 1 so um, language is uh, 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 the sentence is long and too many phrases are there but to make it simple it can be broken down into two parts first is when it would be applicable if he has opted for this it is saying he has opted for this and in succeeding 5 years he in any of the succeeding 5 years he has not opted for that so if he has not opted for that uh, for uh, these provisions in any of the succeeding 5 years then what would happen he will not be entitled to opt for for this particular provision for the subsequent 5 assessment years so uh, my understanding of this section is uh, if he has not opted this subsection would not apply if he has opted for this subsection 4 he has to continue this for next 5 assessment years also after this 6 years means once for which he has opted and then 5 years after these 6 years he can opt out of this section without implication of uh, uh, subsection 4 so this is a block of 6 years when he can opt for 44 ad without application of subsection 4 and in case he opts out in between this block of 6 years then what will happen he will not be entitled to opt for 44 ad for next 5 years so this is a, a simple interpretation of this section and subsection 5 uh we'll come to subsection 5 which says not withstanding anything contained in the foregoing provisions of this section an eligible assessee to whom the provisions of subsection 4 are applicable and whose total income exceeds the maximum amount which is not chargeable to income tax shall be required to keep and maintain such books of accounts and other documents as required under subsection 2 of section uh, 44 aa and get them audited and furnish a report of such audit as required under section 44 ab so this is similar to uh, provisions inserted in section 44 ad a4 so this subsection 5 uh as a requirement of maintenance of books and accounts and uh, getting them audited when the income is at a lower amount and the amount is exceeding the maximum amount the, the total income is exceeding the maximum amount which is not chargeable to tax it comes into play only where subsection 4 has come into picture so where subsection 4 is not applicable subsection 5 will not be applicable subsection 5 will be applicable only where subsection 4 implication of subsection 4 is there and implication of subsection 4 would come for which year for the year when the assessee has once opted and then he has opted not to show profit as per subsection 4 and for next 5 years there would be an implication he cannot opt so subsection 4 would be applicable for next 5 years so uh, this is my interpretation and uh, so uh, the the conclusion of uh, interpretation of uh, these two sections comes 
like if the assessee has turned over up to rupees 1 crore so what will happen he has not opted for 44 ad then whether accounts are required to be kept and whether audit is required to be done so if he has opted there is no requirement of maintenance of books of accounts there is no requirement of getting the he has, if he has never opted for 44 ad what will happen so uh, accounts yes there is a separate requirement if his turnover is exceeding 10 lakhs and income is exceeding 1 lakh 20000 he has to maintain the books of accounts under subsection uh, under section 44 double a but he is not required to get his accounts audited even if his profit is less than 8% less than 8% or 6% whatever is applicable to him he is not required to get his accounts audited if he has never opted for this as per the uh, reading of subsection 4 and 5 but if if he has once opted and then he comes out of that then of course he will uh, have to maintain the books of accounts and he will have to get the accounts audited for next 5 years and after that he is free from that for the 6 years block he was required then 6 or more uh, whatever period uh, was there and after that he will not be uh, uh, required to get the uh, uh, he may choose to be in uh, normal provisions then uh, uh, a person whose turnover is from 1 uh, to 2 crores then what will happen so this 6 uh, years may get extended to 7 years 8 years 9 years year. if any time he has opted so for next 5 years he has to opt for this so uh, 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 this would means if for 2 years he has opted so then uh, next 5 years he has to opt for this and then uh, one to if he has never opted for this then he uh, will not uh, come uh, the the applicability of subsection 4 will not come on him so in other cases uh, where turnover is more than 1 crore but up to 2 crore so if he has opted for this uh, 44 ad of course uh, he uh, is not required to maintain the books of accounts 44 double a would not be applicable and 44 ab also would not be applicable on him and then if he has not taken the option then of course uh, because uh, uh, his turnover is more than 1 crore Uh, he is otherwise required to get his accounts audited so section 44 ab will be applicable and of course 44 double a would be applicable in his case so uh, this is according to me is the uh, interpretation of this particular section so if we are falling under this subsection 4 we have in the tax audit we have to mention clause e um, in uh, clause 8 of form 3cd uh, which says that indicate the relevant clause of section 44 ab under which the audit has been conducted so we have to give 44 ab clause e in that case if uh, by virtue of subsection 4 we are getting our accounts audited so these are some of the examples uh, uh, where Uh, the applicability of section 44 ad 44 ada 44 ab would come uh, the first example is mr a started manufacturing and it is first year turnover is all cash and uh, turnover is 1.5 uh, uh, 150 lakhs or 1.5 crores and net profit is 8 lakhs means it is less than 8% and uh, the total income is 8.5 lakhs so uh, whether ad 44 ad would be applicable in this case no but uh, 44 ab yes it would be applicable because the turnover is exceeding rupees uh, 1 crore so he'll get uh, he'll have to get his accounts audited 
so if uh, miss b uh, is trading and uh, the turnover is in cash and uh, 90 lakhs is the turnover and uh, net profit is 10 lakhs and he is a uh, uh, doctor and uh, as a doctor he is getting a fees of 45 lakhs and uh, the net profit uh, is 25 lakhs and total income is <coughs> 32 lakhs then 44 ad uh, he has not opted any time uh, 44 ad 44 ad will not be applicable in this case and then uh, doctor's fees is 45 lakhs so on 45 lakhs uh, he may show uh, the the uh, profit Uh, net profit is 25 lakhs it is more than uh, uh, 50% so he may opt for ada he may not uh, uh, get his uh, books of accounts audited books of accounts maintained so 44 uh, ada would uh, uh, he may opt for 44 ada and 44 ab would not be applicable in this case because uh, under both the clauses a and b business and profession turn turnover has to be separately seen because uh, those clauses specifically mentioned turnover of the business is more than 1 crore and in clause b it is mentioned that turnover of the profession is more than 50 lakhs so in this case as well uh, uh, in this case also 44 ab in this case 44 ab will not be applicable So now we come on the third example. Uh, Ms. C uh, uh, has trading turnover all cash in eighty lakhs and net profit of four lakhs and total income is three lakhs. So in that case, forty-four AD because uh, uh, it is less than one crore. He has not opted. It is uh, not mandatorily applicable. Forty-four AD is not applicable and turnover less than one crore. 44 ab also is not applicable mr d is trading turnover in all uh, cash turnover is 95 lakhs commission income is 6 lakhs net profit is 15 lakhs and total income is 14 lakhs so uh, the 44 ad is specifically mentioned that the person who is earning commission income would not be entitled to opt for this uh, 44 ad so 44 ad is not applicable in that case but since turnover would constitute both the amounts is uh, sales and commission so provisions of 44 ab would be applicable and the uh, last one uh, mr e has Uh, is an agriculturist and total cash turnover in cash is five crores rupees. So in agriculture income, since it is exempt, it would not come uh, under the head business and profession. So uh, there is no applicability of section forty four A D as well as forty four A. So we have already seen. the turnover exemption limit uh, for business it is separate profession it is separate now some issues come that uh, a particular uh, work uh, would it be a business or would it be profession so as to consider uh, the 50 lakhs limit or 1 crore limit or maybe 5 crore limit so uh, some curiosities are there maybe motor garage what is a um, um, a motor garage whether it is a business or it is a profession uh, uh, i, I if, had it been a live uh, face to face uh, uh, this thing conference i would have asked the audience about each and every uh, item uh, but uh, now i think uh, it would not be uh, possible here to discuss it uh, online so uh, i would take it one by one motor garage so motor garage uh, uh, is run by a mechanic so mechanic and mechanic and motor garage uh, both may be different also 
because uh, we have seen some of the mechanics which uh, will give us a list of items what are required he will maintain his stock of consumables like grease oil and uh, the small items screw nut bolt and all and his tools for uh, uh, for uh, uh, getting the cars uh, uh, repaired but he would not maintain the stock of items which are to be uh, uh, replaced in the uh, car so if that kind of garage that kind of mechanic is there what would happen and if garage is there then what would happen so uh, these are both uh, two different type of things if he is maintaining the complete stock of all items many items and he is replacing them he is billing for them and labor charges is bill along with that then the case would be different and then if is a mechanic mechanic per se and uh, um, in old times we have seen that uh, whatever uh, items are required he will give a list that all these items i would be needing for uh, getting this car ready uh, for further use so if that kind of case is there then what would happen so uh, whether a mechanic is a professional uh, uh, that also is again a question so profession uh, is defined under income tax act section 236 gives the definition but the definition is limited uh, definition says that profession includes vocation so now we have to decide that whether it is a, a, not a profession which we understand but can it be called as vocation uh, 44 double a also gives a list of profession where books of accounts has to be uh, maintained in uh, a particular uh, uh, fashion so chartered accountants are there then a notification a medical professionals are there then notification and is there which uh, gives detail of uh, film actors directors and uh, 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 producer all the uh, not producer film uh, actor uh, dancers and all uh, it gives uh, a detail of uh, various uh, persons who may be Uh, covered as professional under uh, under the provisions of that particular section but now uh, as uh, this case uh, uh, mechanic whether this is a vocation so in my view uh, because he is vocation uh, can be uh, in in wikipedia we can get a definition of vocation uh, if he is a trained in a particular fashion to perform a particular job then he can be uh, 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 he can be referred to as a vocational he, he uh, this, this is a vocation so mechanic if he can repair the car uh, so he uh, definitely we can say that uh, this is a vocation so uh, he would be covered under the definition of profession and then the 50 lakhs limit would be applicable but if there is a garage full fledged garage where he is selling the items also and he is repairing the car and he has a team of mechanics then the situation would be a different uh, for both the items the same bills are being raised then uh, item may be uh, th- then the situation may be different then private tuition by a chartered accountant uh, whether it is a vocation or not um, in my view this is not a vocation but uh, of course a different view can be taken on this vedic astrological consultant yes certainly it is a vocation stock brokers no it is not a vocation so uh, all those film actors because uh, uh, 44 double a uh, gives a reference yes all those would be coming in the definition of uh, uh, profession so where in those cases 50 lakhs limit would be applicable otherwise uh, the regular limit in business in case of business 1 uh, crore limit would be applicable there is a case which says that uh, the word business is one of the quite import and it means activity carried on continuous and systematically 
by a person by the application of his labor or skill with a view to earn an income the expression business does not necessarily mean trade or manufacture only it means service also might be a business and not profession so we have to uh, uh, see each and every case and wherever some uh, some confusion arises it is always uh, it is always good to have a conservative view in all these cases or it is to be done so uh, we, we we should advise the client to get the accounts audited it is better to get the accounts audited in those cases so uh, we have seen certain examples there are some more examples uh i think uh, all of them are already covered in the earlier example so i am skipping this slide so what is uh, sales or turnover or gross receipts as per uh, 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 the provisions of section 44 ab so it is not uh, defined anywhere uh, Uh, the sales turnover gross receipts uh, 44 ab does not define neither in uh, section 2 there is a definition of sales so it has to be construed in commercial sense what is the sales whether it includes excise duty or maybe uh, gst now uh, or not one question is there so uh, gst uh, uh, in our institute's guidance note there is a clear uh, mention that uh, if gst is shown as part of turnover in the books of accounts in the financial uh, statements then only it is to be considered as part of sales turnover of gross receipts otherwise it is not required to be uh, taken as uh, sales turnover or gross receipts there are some other examples like dividend interest and rental income so a uh, dividend rental income and interest uh if these particular items see if uh, there is a broker share broker or uh, uh, a business uh, uh, as a business the assessee is investing into shares and then getting dividends then dividend would be included in the definition of turnover in the in the turnover otherwise if it's a pure investment then dividend would not be included likewise interest uh, also interest if it is part of business operations then it will be part of turnover otherwise not rental income also if the assessee deals into properties and he earns rental income then rental income would be part of turnover otherwise not and uh, extra and ancillary charges like freight insurance charge in the sale invoice what would happen see if uh, there is a clear indication of freight insurance and uh, ancillary charges in the invoice and those are incurred on uh, those are charged on actual basis whatever is incurred it is charged on actual basis pure reimbursement then it may not be included because it will be reduced from the uh, uh, total expenditure incurred otherwise if it is charged on lump sum basis on uh, his own rate on the rate of assessee then it would be part of uh, uh, it will it, it will be included in the uh, uh, turnover excise duty and sales tax collected on sales i have already touched upon gst if uh, financial statement shows it as turnover then it should be considered as turnover otherwise not stock brokers making sales on behalf of clients no uh, transactions on behalf of client would not be included his brokerage or the transactions which he has taken up uh, in his own capacity as a trader in shares would be part of turnover Uh, credit balance is written off uh, 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 definitely it has got no concern with the turnover uh, if there are credit balances and uh, these are uh, written off it will not be part of turnover the speculative transactions uh, it have uh, credit balances written off has not to be adjusted with turnover turnover uh, would be the sales invoices which are there uh, would be turnover the speculative transactions uh, Uh, the guidance note says that uh, net of uh, the losses and profits 
are to be considered as turnover. Uh, all profits and all losses, both inclusive, would constitute turnover. Discounts and sales returns. If sales are there and sales returns are there, then returns are to be uh, uh, reduced from uh, the turnover. Even if the sales was in the previous year and then uh, returns are there in this year, then also uh, this uh, return has to be reduced from the total turnover. This guidance note specifically says. And uh, in case of discounts, if those are trade discounts, then it has to be reduced from the turnover. But if it is cash discount, then it has not to be reduced from the turnover. Likewise, reimburse in our case, reimbursement received from the clients. If it is on actual basis, we have to reduce it from our expenditure. Uh, so uh, this is this would not be part of turnover. But it, if it is on lump sum basis, then it would form part of the turnover. Advance received from customers and forfeited, like in uh, sometimes in real estate transactions or in other transactions. So, advance received from customers would definitely form part of uh, uh, the turnover only. Sale proceeds from fixed assets, no, it is not part of turnover. Traveling agent receipt, uh, if he is uh, uh, charging the lump sum consideration then the entire amount would be turned over but if he is charging his commission on the actual expenditure incurred uh, by him um, reimbursement he is taking reimbursement of the main travel agent or for flight ticket then uh, the commission part on the would be part of the turnover and this is very important share of profit of partner of firm so share of profit of partner of firm uh, definitely it is exempt from tax uh, section 10 would be applicable so uh, it is not turnover but what will happen if remuneration comes so remuneration is a business income yes uh, it's a business income and uh, it's a uh, income uh, uh, and uh, there is a receipt of remuneration and business income is there. So what would happen in that case? It's a, a interesting question. If uh, it, um, in case of profession, it goes beyond 50 lakhs, whether he is to get his accounts audited. And if in case of business, if it exceeds one crore, whether the partner who is getting remuneration would be uh, required to get his accounts audited. So in my view, uh, yes, turnover, uh, um, this uh, remuneration certainly it's part of business income and when uh, and it becomes part of gross receipts as well so he will be required to get uh, get his accounts audited if he crosses uh, those two limits one crore or 50 lakhs uh, there are some uh, judgment of Kolkata bench also in case of price waterhouse uh, partner of price waterhouse both the cases were there in uh, case of partner of price waterhouse so their remuneration was uh, more than uh, 50 lakhs so uh, the bench held that uh, they are required to get uh, their accounts uh, audited so uh, right back amounts payable to creditors so this is a different transaction. Uh, it should not be forming part of the turn. So I think uh, uh, I'll skip uh, this slide as well of uh, examples. Now I'll take uh, some specific issues. Uh, 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 first I'll take up uh, the new issues uh, which will be arising uh, during the, uh, for the first time uh, in audit uh, for uh, this particular assessment year 2021 and then if time permits uh, I'll take some other issues as well. So uh, this uh, first thing which uh, I would like to deal upon is uh, section 43b clause 32 of the Clause uh, 23 of the tax audit report. So this year, we all know that uh, on 31st March, uh, there was a lockdown from 23rd March to 31st March. And government announced 
uh, moratorium of uh, the installment due becoming due and interest also becoming due. So uh, the assessee was not uh, required to pay the interest and installment for that period. Uh, whatever has become due uh, between 23rd March to 31st March, assessee was not required to pay. So now, uh, this provisions of section 43b, what it says that uh, in case of interest uh, payable to NBFC, payable to banking company or payable to a financial institution, it says that any sum payable by the assessee as interest on any loan or borrowing from uh, a scheduled bank or uh, uh, agriculture credit society or primary cooperative society in accordance with the terms and conditions of the agreement governing such loan. Uh, so this interest would be allowed only on actual payment basis and if it is paid uh, within the uh, due date of filing the return of income then it will be allowed in the year which it fall due it uh, in which it is uh, debited to the profit and loss so these are the provisions and uh, some explanations have been added in this provision uh, that uh, which says that uh, for the removal of doubt it is hereby declared that a deduction of any sum being interest payable shall be allowed if such interest has been actually paid and any interest referred to in that clause which has been converted into a loan or borrowing shall not be deemed to have been actually paid. And now what has happened? Uh, all this interest and uh, uh, whatever has become due uh, uh, has come into moratorium period and that has been converted as a uh, term loan. FITL in uh, uh, by the banks. So whether this uh, deduction, the SSC would be entitled to claim this deduction or not. Uh, my opinion on this is uh, uh, because it is allowable on actual payment basis. So it would not be, uh, it cannot be claimed. But some of the experts are taking a view that uh, this section covers an expenditure in respect of payment uh, which has become payable. So what uh, the conclusion is being drawn by some of the experts as the loan that the interest amount has not become payable, has not become due for being paid by a notification issued by the government by initiative taken by the government or RBI or the banks. So it has not become due if they have opted for that moratorium, it has not become due. So in that case, uh, this provisions of section 43B will not be applicable in that case and it will be allowed. This is view of some of the experts. But my view is if we are crediting as uh, a, in, this interest as liability in our uh, balance sheet, we are charging it to profit and loss account certainly. It is payable. The word due is not specifically mentioned here. And uh, if the overall scheme of section 43B is seen, uh, uh, the, the intention of the government is to give a deduction only when it is paid. So if it is not discharged, the liability is not discharged, it has to be disallowed that view would be uh, uh, an aggressive view in my view. So uh, I would take a view that uh, if the interest is not paid, so uh, in that case, this uh, uh, interest expenditure cannot be claimed. Otherwise, the whole mechanism of Section 43B would fail. Means how uh, it would be treated in the next year, when it is paid, how it would be treated uh, it is all, uh, 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 it, it cannot be calculated, anything, the deduction, when it is to be taken, it cannot be calculated then. So in my view, uh, uh, if we have not paid from 23rd of uh, March to 31st of March any uh, interest, 
uh, which is certainly it is debited in the in the account of the borrower it is then uh, credited as liability by the borrower but it was deferred so once it has become payable it has to be disallowed under section 43b this is my view then there are uh, some uh, i would uh, like to take this clause 20a and 20b also uh, uh, in this clause th there is a controversy in uh, uh, view taken by some of the high courts are uh, different than the others employees contribution received and then paid uh, by the employer Uh, towards esic and pf so uh, the law requires that it is to be paid within the due date for getting the deduction of this expenditure and this due date should be the date specified by uh, the uh, provisions of those particular laws means uh, uh, provident fund laws and esic laws so uh, however in certain cases Uh, uh, a, a case was there alum exclusion delhi high court and then uh, there after many cases uh, including rajasthan high court case which has followed this view that uh, uh, 3615a contribution received from employee and then uh, if the contribution if that contribution has been paid uh, by the uh, uh, end of uh, 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 within the due date of filing the return of income instead of the provisions of law that it has to be paid within the due date of uh, 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 within the due date of respective law the interpretation has been taken by the courts that uh, uh, it can be paid by the end of uh, by the date of filing the return of income under the income tax act so this is a controversy so rajasthan high court allows the payment even beyond the due dates but within the due date of filing return of income so in that case what should be done so and if we uh, make the mention of this amount referring this particular uh, provisions then there would certainly be a disallowance so uh, and in some of the cases maybe in uh, chennai high court uh, there is a uh, uh, decision in against the assessee so um, uh, the tax audit uh, which has to be filed by uh, uh, a chennai for a chennai client it uh, would be treated differently and uh, by the rajasthan client it would be treated differently, differently. Uh, uh, means uh, there is a posi different position of allowance or disallowance of this particular deduction so uh, in my view in such a case uh, we should make a uh, appropriate disclosure in form uh, 3 cb uh, uh, after clause 5 that uh, because of this and this reason we have not included this particular amount in the respective column clause 20 and we have not included uh, this particular item uh, referring to the uh, judgment uh, uh, of uh, uh, delhi high court rajasthan high court and uh, we have uh, treated this as allowable in view of those decisions and we should definitely take a representation or request of the assessee quoting uh, all these uh, these judgments in these cases now these uh, provisions uh, Uh, before taking uh, these provisions which were old i would like to take uh, new clauses which uh, have been inserted recently uh uh in the form uh 3c d uh 
in part a clause 8 a uh, has been introduced uh, it is not there on this slide uh, clause 8 a is introduced uh, which says that uh, whether the assessee has opted for taxation under section 115 ba 115 bwa or bab so these sections were uh, new sections applicable uh, uh, for the year for the first time and uh, were introduced in between the year between uh, uh, the two annual budgets 2019 and 2020 and applicability of this uh, these sections came uh, uh, from the assessment year 2021 so uh, for the first time uh, this clause is there so in 8a uh, we have to give whether the option has been taken by the assc so there are forms uh, for opting of uh, these particular sections these are uh, lower rate uh, of uh, tax uh, provisions like 15 uh, 115 bwa is for applicability of 22% of uh, tax rate for uh, uh, the companies and uh, 115 bab is for 15% rate for new manufacturing companies so if the company has opted for this by filing form uh, uh, 10 c 10 d or uh, 10 c or 10 d then we have to mention it here that uh, yes the assc has opted for this so we have to take care because in many cases we are the consultant as well we are filing the return of income as well so we have to advise to file these options before uh, filing this uh, tax audit report so they they are opting uh, the the uh, provisions allow them to take the option uh, before uh, the due date of filing the return of income however uh, in the tax audit report uh, they ask that uh, whether it is uh, uh, they have opted for this particular provision or not so if they have opted and filed the form we can make a mention here that yes they have uh, the assc has opted for this and then uh, if uh, they have opted for 115 bwa so for 2021 only there would be a clause for adjustment of uh, written down value so uh, the provisions of those sections uh, 115 bwa uh, what it says that uh, uh, if the assc is opting for this particular provision then uh, uh, some deductions under various uh, provisions like 35 ac 35 32 uh, section 32 group of allowances and 32 2a 32 ac and all though all those allowances will not be uh, uh, given and carry forward of all those allowances will also not be given so if those are being carried forward from the previous assessment year if the assc wants to opt for this then deduction of those allowances will not be given so uh, uh, and in case of 32 section 32 additional depreciation would not be given so if uh, any amount of additional depreciation has been claimed earlier so uh, written down value has to be adjusted for that amount uh, uh, if the assc has uh, claimed 32 2a and only 50% of the amount could be claimed because the addition was made after 180 days so the uh, other 50% has to be reduced from the written down value so this adjustment has to be made uh, this is consequential amendment uh, consequent to uh, the amendment in section uh, the the insertion of new clauses 115 bwa and bab so these are uh, new provisions likewise uh, detail of brought forward losses or depreciation also has to be adjusted the losses or uh, uh, brought forward depreciation in respect of these items which are not allowable uh, uh, has to be removed from uh, the brought forward list so in clause 32 also 
uh, this uh, uh, particular information has to be given. So these are new amendments. So these three impacts are there for the first time. This 43B and these uh, new uh, 43B interest and uh, this new clause 115B AA BAB impact are there for the first time in the tax order. So now uh, I'll uh, try to conclude in uh, next five to ten minutes. Uh, the clause thirteen of uh, the of form three uh, C D uh, requires uh, to give detail of uh, adjustment in I C D S. And also disclosure of uh, ICDS. This ICDS is a complete uh, subject in itself, and uh, I think uh, uh, there should be a, a full day seminar on ICDS. This is such a long subject. So any adjustment, if it is required to be made under ICDS, under uh, specific ICDS, has to be given under clause 13. So if uh, it says that if uh, there is a deviation from ICDS in the books of accounts, books of accounts present something else and ICDS says something else, uh, then uh, impact of uh, such deviation, whether it increases the profit or decreases the profit, has to be given under clause 13E and disclosure as required under each ICDS has to be given under 13F. So uh, whatever disclosures are required has to be given uh, as a uh, enclosed enclosure. It can be scanned and enclosed. Uh, uh, disclosure under ICDS, uh, a separate sheet can be enclosed for that. So uh, there might be difference of uh, valuation of closing stock also. Uh, and there is another clause as well for closing a stock uh, method of valuation of closing a stock employed in the previous year clause 14 is there uh, because of applicability of section 145a which says that while valuing all the financial transactions relating to stock in trade uh, the tax duty should be included in the value so uh, normally uh, we enter, we, we make our books of accounts in a fashion that uh, these taxes are not included in purchases, sales, and closing stock. So, but 145A requires uh, uh, to include taxes and duties paid on the purchase transaction and sales transaction uh, to include uh, uh, taxes and duties in the purchase and sale transaction and also in closing stock. So, uh, how to disclose uh, that difference? Uh, so, uh, there are uh, some views that uh, a complete working should be done in that respect. But our institute in the guidance note has wonderfully explained uh, the situations of a manufacturing concern, of a trading concern, of a concern which is manufacturing as well as trading. That there should not be any impact of uh, including the uh, uh, GST, maybe earlier it was VAT and excise duty. Now, uh, GST. So, there would not be any difference uh, if the GST is included in purchase, sales, and uh, closing stock. So, uh, many of us are following that view only, and we give a proper disclosure that, uh, in view of uh, guidance note. Uh, 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 of the Institute of Federal Accountants of India, uh, there is no difference, and uh, therefore, uh, no adjustment is required to be made. Now, I would uh, like to deal upon particular uh, three, four uh, clauses wherein certain personal transactions of the SSC in case of proprietor are required to be considered under tax audit. So, like uh, uh, clause uh, 28 is there wherein uh, you are required to give a disclosure of uh, receiving 
any property which is not uh, uh, which is not bought for a consideration which is not bought for a fair market value of that property so how to disclose if in case we are not given the full particulars we we are auditing a proprietary concern of an assessee and we are not auditing the proprietor what would happen we have no access to the uh, bank statements to the personal bank statements to the personal records of the proprietor then what would happen then we have to give a complete uh, disclosure that we have audited in form uh, 3cb when uh, particulars of 3cb are required to be given and also in case of 3cb we can give that uh, we, we have to mention that uh, uh, we have audited uh, name of the proprietorship uh, the accounts of uh, xyz enterprises only and we have not audited the complete accounts of this and this indeed this problem would not come in case of firm company or any other enterprise but in case of individual this problem might arise so in case in that case we can clearly mention that we have not uh, seen we, we can give a disclaimer kind of thing that we have not seen the uh, individual accounts as then the accounts of proprietary concern of that individual so uh, likewise uh, there are other transactions if he has transferred some asset his personal asset uh, uh, provisions of 50c would be applicable in that case we have to give the particulars because this form 3cb where we tax audit we have to do for the uh, uh, entire for entire affairs of the assessee we are doing tax audit of the assessee not for the proprietary concern and we are giving name of the assessee pan of the assessee everything we are to mention about the assessee so if we are not and we have not seen particular uh, transactions of the assessee we could not lay hand on particular bank accounts of the assessee uh, which are not connected to the proprietary concern we have to make a complete disclosure in form 3c b uh, in clause 3 as well as clause 5 so uh, that was the issue i wanted to uh, give attention then uh, just for a reference uh, a particular clause 44 the last clause has been added though the applicability is of this clause has been extended but this would give a perspective of the government that what the government wants from us to what extent the information uh, is desired from us. So this clause uh, 44 says that breakup of total expenditure of entities registered or not registered under the GST means uh, entire expenditure we have to uh, give in the table in clause 44 and we have to give detail that uh, 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 how much expenditure we have incurred which is pertaining to uh, in which the payment is made to the registered entity under GST and payment for which is not made under the uh, uh, made to a to an entity which is not registered under GST and uh, uh, in respect of uh, all those expenditure relating to goods or services exempt from gst separate detail has to be given relating to entities falling under composition scheme separate uh, details have to be given relating to other registered entities a separate uh, details is to be given so the complete breakup of all expenditures vis-a-vis uh, -vis the gst uh, 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 their their ap uh, applicability of gst on the service provider or the uh, or the vendors is to be given 
uh, under clause 44 uh, though the applicability of this clause has been uh, extended and uh, this would not be required to be given this year uh, it would be applicable from next year onwards but uh, the this shows the intent of the government uh, that uh, the tax auditor should give full attention on uh, the accounts uh, what he is uh, checking so friends uh, this was uh, all uh, i can take up the other clauses also but uh, i think uh, um, there should be some time for the queries also uh, all those clauses uh, are there as it is uh, we also have done uh, the tax audit in the last year so i would skip that part and uh, i would uh, uh, rather uh, go for the queries so uh, thank you very much uh, for giving uh, patient hearing and i would uh, request for the queries thank you very much Futures and options. Yes, sir. So, uh, what is included in this turnover? All sales and purchases transactions or uh, what? Hello. Hello. Sir, my voice is coming. Yes, your voice is coming. ये फ्यूचर्स एंड ऑप्शंस के केस में जो टर्नओवर होना चाहिए वो जो प्रॉफिट्स uh, और लॉसेस दोनों का जो टोटल है उसको हमको टर्नओवर में इंक्लूड करना चाहिए ना कि जो टोटल वॉल्यूम ऑफ ट्रांजैक्शंस है तो ऐसा हमारा इंस्टीट्यूट का गाइडेंस लोग भी कहता है कि हमको पॉजिटिव्स और नेगेटिव्स का टोटल करके उसको टर्न मानना है तो अगर वो पॉजिटिव्स और नेगेटिव्स का टोटल मतलब पॉजिटिव्स और टोटल नेगेटिव अगर एक करोड़ का हमको प्रॉफिट हुआ है और एक करोड़ का लॉस हुआ है तो वो जीरो नहीं होएगा वो दो करोड़ होएगा तो उसको दो करोड़ मान के हमको टर्नओवर में उसको दो करोड़ रुपए मानना है ना कि उसमें जितने ट्रांजेक्शन इन्वॉल्व थे क्योंकि वो कई बार हजारों करोड़ के ट्रांजेक्शन हो जाते हैं तो उन ट्रांजेक्शन का टोटल नहीं देखना है परचेज वैल्यू सेल वैल्यू ये नहीं देखनी है हमको नेट अमाउंट देखना है और नेट अमाउंट में भी परचेज मतलब प्रॉफिट और लॉस को नेट नहीं करना है प्रॉफिट को अलग जोड़ना है लॉस को अलग जोड़ना है दोनों को जोड़ के हम अगर लिमिट से ऊपर जा रहे हैं तो हमको ऑडिट करवाना है सर यहाँ पर जैसे अनिल कुमार है देखिए ये जो क्लॉज ट्वेंटी सेवन है इसमें स्पेसिफिकली जीएसटी मैंशन नहीं है तो जबकि जो स्कीमा है इनकम टैक्स का ये जो आई टी डी पोर्टल पे जो स्कीमा होता है उसमें जीएसटी दिया हुआ है कि जीएसटी की डिटेल इसमें हमको फिल करनी है बट सीबीडीटी uh, की तरफ से अभी ये क्लैरिफिकेशन नहीं है क्योंकि जो हमको क्वेश्चन पूछा है उसमें वैल्यू एडेड टैक्स की uh, और सेंट्रल वैल्यू एडेड टैक्स इस तरह से पूछा गया है तो इस चक्कर में काफी लोग ऐसा भी लिखते हैं कि क्योंकि इसमें जीएसटी नहीं है हमने जीएसटी की डिटेल नहीं दी है अदरवाइज स्कीमा में जीएसटी की डिटेल है इफ वी वॉन्ट टू गिव वी कैन गिव वी शुड शेयर दिस डिटेल ऑल्सो अदरवाइज वी कैन स्किप दिस डिटेल ऑल्सो फॉर वॉन्ट ऑफ क्लैरिफिकेशन फ्रॉम सी बी
सर मनोज विजय वर्गीय जी तो आप ही विजय जी ने हाथ खड़ा किया यस सर हेलो 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 हाँ सर सर जैसा भी आपने बताया एफ एंड के केस में प्लस माइनस करके हम टर्न ओवर लेंगे हाँ हेलो तो जब हम हाँ। इसकी प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट बनाएंगे तो टर्न ओवर तो फिर वही लेंगे जो टर्न ओवर है और इसके ट्रांजैक्शंस को मतलब प्रॉफिट के ट्रांजैक्शंस को अपन इनर कॉलम में नेट करके दिखा सकते हैं लॉस के ट्रांजैक्शंस को अपन इनर कॉलम में नेट करके दिखा सकते हैं और दोनों को आउटर कॉलम में दिखा के जो हमारे एक्सपेंसेस इसके लिए हैं वो एक्सपेंसेस हम हमारे डेबिट में प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट के डेबिट में आ जाएंगे तो इस तरीके से हमारा पी एंड एल अकाउंट बन जाएगा हाँ पर टर्न ओवर तो एक्चुअली लेना पड़ेगा ना उसमें तो उसमें इस तरीके का डीमिंग थोड़ी लेंगे प्लस माइनस करके सर प्लस माइनस इनर कॉलम में करके हम दिखा सकते हैं जैसे हम एक्साइज ड्यूटी नेट करते थे उस तरीके से हम इनर कॉलम में नेट करके टर्न ओवर दिखा सकते हैं नहीं तो हमको फिर मतलब अपेरेंटली अगर वो दिखेगा तो उसमें गलती आ जाएगी टर्न ज्यादा दिखेगा हाँ वो और नहीं टर्न ओवर बैलेंस शीट ही नहीं बैठेगी ना बाकी के बैलेंस को कहा लेके जाएंगे नहीं सर वो हम अगर नेट कर रहे हैं ना फेस पे ही और आउटर कॉलम में बाहर ले रहे हैं तो वो हो जाएगा कैलकुलेशन ठीक है ठीक है आवाज आ रही है यस सर यस सर अंदीप जी ये है बेसिकली कि जैसे 44 एडी के अंदर है तो 44 डबल ए के अंदर जैसे बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट्स की दरकार है बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट्स हमने बना ली है बट अगर 44 अगर हम उसका 5 परसेंट से कम का वो रहता है या 8 परसेंट से कम का रहता है तो और अपन को उसमें ऑडिट करवाना जरूरी है कि अपन बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट मेंटेन कर रहे हैं अपन ने फोर्टी फोर अवेल नहीं किया है हमने कभी भी फोर्टी फोर एडी अवेल नहीं किया पहले नहीं पहले कभी नहीं लिया हमने रेगुलर बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट्स हम मेंटेन कर रहे हैं और उसके अंदर हमारे को क्योंकि जनरली क्या होता है कि मेरे हिसाब से जो एक्ट के हिसाब से तो ये है कि देर इज नो नीड एट ऑल टैक्स ऑडिट की अगर बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट मेंटेन कर रहा हूँ मैं और मैं फोर्टी फोर एडी में नहीं जा रहा हूँ और मेरा प्रॉफिट अगर पांच परसेंट हो आठ परसेंट से कम है तो आई थिंक देर इज नो नीड ऑफ एनी टैक्स ऑडिट यस yes, सर सर uh, ऐसा है uh, uh, जो एक करोड़ से कम के केसेस हमारे हुए उसमें ही आपकी क्वेरी है उसके लिए ही आपकी क्वेरी ऐसा मेरे को समझ में आ रहा है आ, एक तो अगर हमने कभी भी अगर हमने कभी भी 44 एडी को ऑप्ट नहीं किया आज से पहले 44 एडी ऑप्टेड नहीं है हम ऑप्ट आउट नहीं हो रहे हैं तो फिर सबसेक्शन फोर और फाइव की एप्लीकेबिलिटी हमारे ऊपर आएगी नहीं तो हमको जो बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट्स रखने की रिक्वायरमेंट है वो बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट्स अगर हम पूरे रख लेते हैं और ऑडिट नहीं करवा ऑडिट करवाने की हमको जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट के बेसिस पे जो प्रॉफिट है उस पर ही हमारा असेसमेंट होना चाहिए तो नहीं बट एज पर एज प्रोफेशन वाला जो मैटर है उसके अंदर तो आप अगर आप बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट मेंटेन करते हैं तो वहां तो फिर भी अगर आप फिफ्टी से कम दिखाते हैं अपन बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट्स मेंटेन करने के बाद में भी अगर 50 परसेंट से कम दिखाते हैं तो वहां तो आपको ऑडिट कराना कंपलसरी है बिल्कुल वहां इस तरह से क्लॉज नहीं है सर वहां के क्लॉज की लैंग्वेज अलग है वहां आप सही कह रहे हैं अगर वहां पे हम कम दिखाएंगे तो हमको ऑडिट करवाना पड़ेगा या या। बट जनरली क्या है हमारी चार्ट अकाउंटेंट्स के बीच में जनरली ये डिस्कशन होता है लोग बात जो कर रहे हैं वो कंपलसरी ऑडिट कर रहे हैं जनरली तो ये कंफ्यूजन ही है या क्या चीज है के हिसाब से तो ऐसा कोई जरूरी नहीं है बिजनेस के अंदर सर कोई बट जनरली जो पीपल जो कर रहे हैं ये जो प्रोविजन है 44 एडी इसके सब्जेक्शन वन को पढ़ते हैं और फोर और फाइव को पढ़ते हैं तो कंफ्यूजन इसमें आता है 
वन के हिसाब से तो लैंग्वेज वही है जो फोर्टी फोर में है और जब ये दो क्लॉजेज आए उससे पहले जो ओरिजिनल फोर्टी फोर एडी आया था उसके हिसाब से जैसा फोर्टी फोर एडी का आप बोल रहे हैं वैसा ही इसका इंटरप्रिटेशन आता था Yeah. तो इसलिए ये कंफ्यूजन कंफ्यूजिंग है इसमें कोई दो राय नहीं है बट अगर फोर और फाइव को पढ़े तो उससे बिल्कुल साफ ये कंक्लूजन निकल के आता है कि रिक्वायरमेंट अगर किसी ने कभी ऑप्ट नहीं किया था उसके लिए रिक्वायरमेंट नहीं है पर फिर भी सेफ साइड में अगर ऑडिट कर देते हैं तो कोई समस्या नहीं आती पर उसमें वो फिर क्लॉज ई लिखना पड़ता है हमको सबसेक्शन एट में तो फिर हम जबरदस्ती उसके अंदर फॉल हो जाएंगे राइट राइट पर हमको भी ये लगता है कि अब चार पांच साल ऑडिट मतलब इसको ऑडिट कर ही देवे कोई खास फर्क पड़ता नहीं अच्छा वो इतने छोटे आसे सी उसमें कि उनकी ऑडिट भी फटाफट हो जाती है कोई बहुत बड़ी कॉम्प्लिकेशन उसमें होती नहीं है खाली एक ही कॉम्प्लिकेशन आती है स्टॉक इन ट्रेड वाली उसका जरूर हमको मैंशन थ्री सी बी और थ्री सी डी में करना पड़ता है तो उसके कारण कहीं कोई रिस्क क्लाइंट पे नहीं आ जाए हमारे मेंशन करने के कारण तो इसलिए अगर एप्लीकेबल नहीं है तो उसको अवॉइड करना अच्छा है और एक्ट के हिसाब से सेक्शन फोर और फाइव के हिसाब से एप्लीकेबल कतई नहीं है अगर आप लेते हैं एडी के अंदर इन डेट केस ये है बट एडीए में तो क्लियर कट है तो प्रोफेशन के अंदर तो अपन को ऑडिट करवानी पड़ेगी और इसमें चाहे तो कर सकते हैं और नहीं चाहे तो अपना जरूरी नहीं है उसमें करें अगर उसने 44 एडी नहीं लिया तो बिल्कुल 44 एडी ए अगर आपने आप प्रॉफिट कम दिखा रहे हो तो करवानी ही पड़ेगी ऑडिट पर एडी में रिक्वायरमेंट नहीं है पर करवाए तो फिर कंटिन्यूसली हम करवाते रहे हैं ऑडिट ठीक है ठीक है थैंक यू आपको दूसरी क्योरी लीजिए सर 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 में हेलो यस यस सपोज लेके फाइनेंशियल तक उसने 44 एडी ऑप्ट किया था एट परसेंट से ज्यादा प्रॉफिट दिखाए थे और फाइनेंशियल ईयर एटीन नाइनटीन में उसने एट परसेंट से कम प्रॉफिट कराया और ऑडिट करवाया तो अब फाइनेंशियल ईयर नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी के लिए उसको 44 AB, e में ऑडिट करवाना होगा कि वो मतलब उसके ईयर मान लिए जाएंगे कि देखिए लैंग्वेज है एन एलिजिबल डिक्लेयर्स प्रॉफिट फॉर एनी प्रीवियस ईयर इन अकॉर्डेंस विद द प्रोविजंस ऑफ दिस सेक्शन एंड ही डिक्लेयर्स प्रॉफिट फॉर एनी ऑफ द फाइव असेसमेंट इयर्स रिलेवेंट टू प्रीवियस ईयर सक्सेडिंग सच प्रीवियस ईयर नॉट इन अकॉर्डेंस विद अब इसका मतलब अब ये फर्स्ट ईयर के लिए बोल रहा है या कंटिन्यूसली करने के लिए मतलब ये छह साल का इसने ब्लॉक बनाया है इसके इंटरप्रिटेशन में भी एक कंफ्यूजन आता है तो मतलब वो जो सिक्स ईयर है उसको भी हम अगर वो पहला ही साल माने ऐसा भी इसका इंटरप्रिटेशन निकलता है तो अगर वो पहला ही साल मान रहे हैं हम उसको सिक्स ईयर को भी तो उसके आगे फिर पांच साल तक हमको इस प्रोविजन को रखना पड़ेगा मतलब जिस साल में हमने डिबेट किया उससे पांच साल में हम नहीं कर पाए तो अगर इस तरह से इंटरप्रिटेशन मतलब ये एक सेफर इंटरप्रिटेशन है थोड़ा एग्रेसिव इंटरप्रिटेशन ये हो सकता है कि छह साल के ब्लॉक के बाद उसको ऑप्शन है कि वो ऑप्ट आउट हो सकता है ये थोड़ा एग्रेसिव इंटरप्रिटेशन हो गया 
तो अगर वो इसके बाद में ऑडिट करवाता है तो नेक्स्ट वापस जो पांच साल है उसके नेक्स्ट पांच साल में भी उसको इसी क्लॉज में ही मतलब ई क्लॉज में ही ऑडिट करवाते रहना पड़ेगा नहीं इसमें मेरे को डाउट ये था कि जो फाइव इयर्स अपन गिनेंगे वो बिफोर इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ दिस सेक्शन ये सब सेक्शन है उसके पिछले वाले भी फाइव इयर्स गिने जाएंगे क्या कि उसके सब्सिक्वेंट के कंटिन्यूस फाइव इयर्स देखे जाएंगे नहीं जो जब ये सेक्शन आया है जैसे ये सिक्सटीन हाँ. से इंट्रोड्यूस हुआ था हाँ. आ, 16 से जब इंट्रोड्यूस हुआ और फिर ये सिक्सटीन से इंट्रोड्यूस हुआ है तो इसके सिक्सटीन के बाद में पांच साल देखने पड़ेंगे क्योंकि फोर की एप्लीकेबिलिटी सिक्सटीन से ही आई है ओके सर ओके इसको देखना पड़ेगा ठीक है मतलब को करने पड़ेंगे इंट्रोडक्शन के बाद के ठीक है ये रमेश मुंद्रा जी अनम्यूट करने का कह रहे हैं रमेश सर नमस्ते सर यस सर सर एक क्वेरी है स्टॉक रिकॉर्ड आपने बोला कि अपनी वजह से एसएससी को प्रॉब्लम हो जाए तो जो स्टॉक रिकॉर्ड वास्तव में मेंटेन ही नहीं है तो उसके लिए क्या लिखे हैं अपन अगर स्टॉक रिकॉर्ड मेंटेन नहीं है तो हमको थ्री सी बी में भी इसका डिस्क्लोजर जो क्लॉज थ्री ए है वहां भी डिस्कलोजर आना चाहिए क्योंकि हम ट्रू एंड फेयर कैसे कह रहे हैं बैलेंस शीट को और फिर थ्री सी डी में क्योंकि स्टॉक की स्पेसिफिक डिटेल मांगता है वो तो वहां स्टॉक का वैल्यूएशन का मेथड क्या है क्या नहीं है तो उसको क्वांटिटी टैली भी मांगता है तो वहां पे भी हमको ये देना पड़ेगा थ्री सी डी का जो क्लॉस फाइव है थ्री सी डी का जो क्लॉस फाइव है उसके नीचे भी ये देना पड़ेगा कि स्टॉक रिकॉर्ड प्रैक्टिकली इनके लिए पॉसिबल नहीं है मेंटेन करना और इस इस कारण से इन्होंने स्टॉक रिकॉर्ड मेंटेन नहीं किया है अगर हम उसमें उनके क्लोजिंग स्टॉक की पूरी डिटेल ले ले तो थोड़ा सा एक अपनी फाइल बेटर रहेगी और उनका वैल्यूएशन कम से कम वैल्यूएशन को तो अपन सर्टिफाई कर सकते हैं थ्री सी फॉर्म में जो वैल्यूएशन आता है क्लोजिंग स्टॉक के मेथड का उसमें कोई क्वालिफिकेशन नहीं जाए इतना हो जाए तो ठीक रहे ओके सर थैंक यू सर Thank you everyone. On behalf of Jaipur Branch, I would like to once again thank our eminent and knowledgeable speaker, Sri C. S. Sandeep Jhawar sir, and also my co-host and for the session, former past president of Jaipur Branch, Sir Pawan Parashar ji. And now I would like to close this session on behalf of Jaipur Branch. We are all thankful to all of you once again. Stay safe, stay healthy, follow Corona protocols. Thank you very much. That's it.